let's get to a little breaking news here on The Jump in the aftermath of the Jazz Nuggets brouhaha. They just want me to say brouhaha on the show as many times as possible. NBA has suspended Denver's Nikola Jokic for one game without pay for leaving the bench. Denver's Mason Plumlee fined 25 grand. Utah's Derek Favors fined $15,000 for their roles in kicking things off. Those two also ejected. But the financial hit for Jokic is going to be around $300 hundred thousand dollars wow. and look obviously we have seen this before I know producer Steve can help me out in the control room here let's get in let's just show it because I know all the fans are gonna go crazy over this yeah. hey if the Suns got suspended we had everybody should get suspended right so obviously oh this is uh this is CJ. gonna be CJ McCollum so this was in CJ McCollum and this was preseason he got a one-game suspension and he didn't think it was fair Right? Remember he talked about this on he social. Did. He did. Um, he's like, he wasn't in the I wasn't in the action. I wasn't doing anything. And then, you know, of course, you remember the 2007 playoffs. We all I remember mean, it. You know, this was a series changer, perhaps possibly a legacy changer. And there was discussion on the show yesterday, neither one of you guys were there for this segment, about hey, this was the David Stern area era. Would Adam Silver be different? Obviously CJ McCollum didn't find it to be different. Do you think Nikola Jokic should have found it to be different? Um no. Uh, and I, I think really when, when you look at this as a whole and I think the league has to look at it that players are taught to protect each, each other yeah. and when incidents happen like that we have certain jobs maybe uh, I'm the 12th man on the team maybe you're the captain well if I'm the captain or you're the captain then we have to respond to incidents like this whether it's to go and try to keep our players okay. on the floor or what have you. So I think with this incident with, with Jokovic, um, he basically felt like his leadership yeah, he needed to, to, to go to out be there. Out so there. you're okay and with probably it? Probably with CJ McCollum. Yes, I am okay with that. Excuse okay. me. But yeah. probably even with CJ, it's like I'm the captain. Yeah. I, I meet the refs before the game. Like, give me some space to rally my, my yeah. troops or pull them back, back in. And I, I think the league has to really pull back on this because I see this sometimes when guys stand up. It's nothing more than a speeding ticket. Right. You you can't go that deep into these players' pocket for incidents like that. I like that expression. Um, it's not lost in the league office that the Nuggets are playing the Suns tonight. Right. I mean, that, that, that irony, has, <laughs> it was not lost on them. I'm, I'm almost sympathetic to the league on this because they're, they, they, everything is with the malice in the palace in mind. And right. they just, you know, the, any escalation of anything, they're paranoid about it. And, and it's easy to say, well, he doesn't do anything. But if the wrong player on the Jazz sees Jokic coming at him in a way that is a little bit aggressive, like something happens, I just, I do think it's worth the league and the union sitting down and trying to find, is there a way we can rewrite this rule that eases it up for players who really just just sort of stand up and take one step. I just need to see what that look would look like. I think it's tough too because it usually happens a lot closer to one bench than another, yes. right? So you are baiting almost the players on the bench where it's happening right in front of. Because as you say, Scotty, your instinct is you're seeing this happen Absolutely. right in front of you. It's two feet from you. You want to protect your guy, help your guy yes. get in there, and the guys on the other end of the court. By nature, I mean, that running across the court is a totally different no, thing. That's a great distinction. And that, that, like, they could write right, that into the rule. Right, and so that, but my point is that, like, I think the guys on the other bench, on the opposite side of the court, they know in their head, even if they take a step or two, they're not going to sprint all the way Absolutely down the court. Not. That's a big deal. So they already have, like, a natural disinclination not to do it. It's the guys to the bench are right in front of, and I think maybe if it happens in front of your bench, you get those two steps. Look where the three-point line is. Maybe it's if you don't cross the three-point arc, right? You're okay. There, you you got you to take human nature into account. And, Scotty, I think your point about especially the leaders on the team, C.J. McCollum and Damian Lillard, as you point out, they do a lot of stuff, official sort of business at the beginning exactly. of the game, sort of for, for yeah. you know, when, when there's pictures to be taken with fans, when they like once a month they yes. bring the sponsors out before a game, that kind of thing. They're the ones who go do it. So there is a little bit of that. I, I think you do have thing. to give them a little space, at least to be able to stand up, see what's going on, not ask the players just to sit back. You know, even the fan stands up. Right, yeah. Uh, Mike, Mike Malone, by the way, top three in my top three of coaches to break up a fight. In, in an NBA game. Mike Malone is tough. You see him get in there, he's Jim not messing Boylan around. Jim Boylan got involved in a Jim fight Boylan in Mexico did, did City in, in a way Gundy, that made Van me. Van Gundy takes it all. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Van Gundy takes Sorry, it all. Jeff.